actually going to stream just my reaction to the wives scenes, but I was gonna fast forward through just Eric's route, doing just like gut feeling choices, and then I'll go back later. And then I miraculously stumbled upon Saro and Diana Macking, and I was like, you know what? Since this is the voyeur route, I might as well start here. Oh my god. Um, but we've already read this during the demo, and so I am just going to quickly read through these things. Let's not eat that soup. No, no way, no how. I was not in the mood to try out new things after what I'd been through. Uh, I'll probably pause a bit for like the wife interactions too, just to read them and soak in and stuff like that. Oh yeah, D please ignore what I named the character. <laughs> Then why was I hunt? Are you all right? I, I'm fine. Whoa! I got gotcha. you. Uh... Whoa! Are you okay? Ah! I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. It's okay. Why does she? Why do I sound like a? A tiny little girl, oh my goodness. James! Whoa! Are you alright? Oh, look at these two. Oh, yes. Um, I named Breva because I couldn't decide between Bree or Diva. So then I decided Breva. Oh. I stared wide eyed. There are wives, Kim? Do. Oh my goodness. Princess. Uh, my body would not. Oh, this is a thing. Yeah. What the? Still? Yep. This is the whole thing going on. Diana. Not until you explain what is going on. Why does she hide from you? I assure you, it's. Not I will not repeat my question. She does want to see Eric. Oh, Something stopping this. her from doing that. And I'm supposed to believe this. Please, just let me. Casually, Diva just dying in the distance. No big deal. I suggest not taking another step forward. Wait! Hold still, okay? What are you- Oh, okay. Staring into the woman's eyes, I watch as a warm hue. Love. Oh my goodness, can we just appreciate how Breva just like goes, Eric, and just launches herself at him? Oh my goodness. I quickly ran around to- <laughs> Bree quickly ran around Diana and rushed towards Eric, wrapping her arms around his neck and feeling him envelop her in his own arms. His warm embrace made her heart squeeze in her chest as she held him close to her. <laughs> oh man, now I know how to read this. I'm sorry that Diva has to have like this huge voyeur kink now. I should have named it. I, kn I should have named this MC Mika, but whatever. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> oh man, you're totally macking on him. Oh what? my goodness. Oh, look Just... at how happy he looks. Oh my goodness, he looks so pleased. She's under some sort of secondary spell. Repulsion, it seems. What I cast on her was an emotional release spell, and that temporarily removed the hold on her. But she's been here a full day, and none of us felt any sort of hold on her. Well, we- Curse? Yes. I'm assuming well, you plan to kill the demon lord. Skip as far as I've been before. Let's lay the curse this time. An eye for an eye. Everyone in the room looked at me in surprise as I finally spoke up. The demon lord had trapped me here with the blood of a thousand demons. It was only fair to trap him with the life of just one. Oh, this is really bloodthirsty too. Will the curse work with just one life? Yes. He won't be able to escape. Because of its dark magic. Are you sure this is the best choice? A monster like him won't stop if we box him in. We have to ensure that he won't be able to do anything while we prepare to fight back. Oh my goodness. As for your reluctance, Sir Brute, we won't be using one of your men. Well then, who would you use? <gasps> it's the pig. <sighs> 
fire is like second, I swear I saw a flash of gold across her visible eyes. She applied to Matthew. A little mongrel who had the nerve to electrocute me in my own castle. I stared. There was really an imp in the castle? However, my mind released the question to focus on Diana's smirk. Something that was off about Diana, and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. Oh ho ho. Oh ho 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 ho. Oh ho 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 ho. So, since you'll be here for a while. Skip. Oh, jeez. What about us? You don't expect us to sit around. Actually, I do. You all don't belong on the battlefield. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Huh? I will not take untrained and unarmed beings into a war zone. Hold on. That's not fair, Diana. Wasn't fair at all. I'm only trying to make sure you all get back to the human world safely. I can't expect- Sorry, Diana. I'm just- This is such an interesting sprite. I'm crying. Let me and my brothers train then. We're demons for fuck's sake. We know how to fight. Oh. We understand completely. We understand, Diana. <sighs> okay, Carrie. I will send you the link to this VOD again tomorrow. <laughs> Very well. I can't exactly keep you here. Wow. Very nice outfit. You look wonderful, princess. <laughs> oh my goodness, Diva. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to head for the Demon Lord's castle. Do you plan to shadow travel? No. I have another method. Don't worry. I'll be back by morning. Faye, please escort our guests to the remaining open rooms while I'm gone. All right. Set up. Yes, my lady. I'll take you to your rooms then. Thank you. We truly appreciate it. Thanks, Faye. Just hold him tightly. Uh, man. I I probably have a lot to go through before the training starts, actually, though. I, I don't want to just read it silently, but, like, reading it out loud doesn't feel right unless I just insert Diva's name in, like, all of these. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, I wanted to walk down the aisle with you as your husband. I was so worried when you didn't show up to the ceremony. Oh! That's, that's so sweet, but oh my goodness. I know it wasn't your doing, love. Don't be upset. You weren't gone long. Not gone long. Around five hours. Holy moly. <laughs> well, time runs differently here than it does in the human world. In the time it takes for an hour to go by in the human world, five go by here in the demon world. Hmm. Well, your father was demanding that Sam open a missing persons investigation since he's a police officer. Luckily, James was able to calm everyone down and, with Iridesa's energy, he blocked everyone's memory and told them to return home and the real wedding would begin later. Looks at midnight? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I, I like how it was phrased specifically in that way. With Iridesa's energy. Oh my. Whew, okay. Only with his wife's help. That gave us time to try to locate you. When we did, we all decided to come through to get you back. <laughs> Can we still talk about James and Beery? Holy moly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you really okay? Uh, okay. There's a lot left, huh? Well, at least you were no longer disgusted by me. Oh, Eric. These are also interesting choices. 
looks at Midnight, <laughs> looks at Diva. I'll just pick this one because that was gut feeling. Oh, what a cutie. We'll get to go home soon. Is this? Oh no. Why? Why did you do that? Oh, the orb. Why would you do that? I don't understand. Huh. I don't understand why you like him. Why? Why? Why Diva likes Eric? Huh. He's icky! He's an icky man! <laughs> Hearing someone else say that is just very entertaining. <laughs> He's the man I love! Loving a person doesn't make them less icky. Loving a person doesn't make them less icky. That is a very true statement. People who are gross stay gross. Oh my god. Cue a sound bite. Guys are gross. What is Icky about him? He talks funny. He keeps touching you. He has those. <laughs> yeah. He is so Icky. Icky. <laughs> I'm not as disgusting as you make me out to be, Spirit. Oh my goodness. There we go. Icky man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Please tell me like one of Diva's many children talks to Eric like this. <laughs> my name is Eric, and you are not welcome in my princess's dreams or her body. You're not either. <laughs> my duty is to protect my princess from anything that threatens her. You, rogue spirit, are considered a threat. All you do is touch her and take her energy. All you do is touch her and take her energy. <laughs> That's not true. What else does the Icky Man do? <laughs> oh my goodness. That's enough. You don't belong here, spirit. Aww. Are you okay? I swear that I will keep you safe. This is so adorable. <sighs> okay, well, there's a spirit in my body. That Who's is an there? Eric who is topless. Let's just take a moment to look at this. Looks at Diva. Looks at the fam. This is for you. It's us. We brought food. Can we come in? Let's just say that it's really weird hearing my own voice. It's just... It's- I know it's something that everyone goes through, but it's just like, it feels really weird hearing my voice. Ugh, it's just like, it feels so weird. Like, even if I don't register that it's my voice in particular, it's just like, oh, wow. Who is that? Oh, thank you, James. You're welcome. You'll never guess who prepared it, though. Fruit slices and all that. How did you both sleep? Our rooms are on the opposite end of the hall, so we didn't know how you two were doing. Did you two get to catch up? Eh? Eh. I'm dropping my earbud because, like, holy shit. <laughs> Please, Matthew. They obviously did more than catch up. A bit of Twilight Tango? Sensual Salsa? I bet he dipped right in. Who let these two be a thing? What the hell? 
How did you both sleep? Did you two get to catch up? Eh? Eh? <coughs> Please, Matthew. They obviously did more than catch up. A bit of Twilight Tango? Sensual Salsa? I bet he dipped right in. These two nerds. I'm crying. Well... Can you... These two fucking shitters. <laughs> These two little shits. What the heck? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Can... I could actually see Di Diva just like... Looks at Eric. Do we tell them? And then just like casually just scarfs her mouth with food. And she's like... Rr, rr, rr. I'm not talking. You're talking. And it's just like... <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what? Let's explain everything to the fam. Uh, let's see, there's something we found out last night. I haven't been in control of myself because of something. What did you find out? Wait, you're not saying that... Hey, are you... pregnant? And Eric choked! <laughs> I quickly turned my head to see uh, Diva quickly turned her head to see Eric covering his mouth and coughing almost violently, most likely trying not to suffocate on the food in his mouth. He quickly swallowed his food and smiled painfully at the group. No, no. She is not pregnant. Eric was right. This was a whole different matter. For a second, I wondered what Eric thought about the question. But more importantly, we needed to let the group know what was going on. Is having a child that bad? <laughs> the icky man doesn't think so. The icky man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, if she were pregnant, I'd be able to expand my legacy. Oh my. I'm not doing anything. Just look at him. Just look at him. He's an icky man. <laughs> oh man. Oh my goodness. What if it's not a spirit and it's just like your subconscious talking to you? And it's just like your subconscious just grows so strong that it's just manifested itself outside of your body and just now harassing you? It's true. He wants to make babies with you. You heard so yourself! All the boys want to make babies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he keeps touching you and trying to make you feel good. He wants to make you have his babies. Keeps touch Stop it. How long did you plan on sticking around? Sticking around? How long do you plan on being in Diva's body? Oh I don't know. Okay, it didn't know. Da -da -da -da. You don't know? I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness, Diva's commentary though. And also Ninja's commentary. Holy shit. <laughs> Subconscious is just gonna keep talking, Diva. <laughs> like <laughs> I just don't. I tried, but I can't get out. Oh my goodness. This was proving to be useless. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was trapped when I died too, you know? We have a different issue. My princess is being haunted by a spirit. A spirit? But I can't hear its thoughts. You can't catch everything, Damien. That doesn't make sense. If a spirit's inside of her body, we would have sensed it. That's the odd part. There's someone within her, but they are not powerful enough to be pinned down. It's as if... It's a child. 
Yes, but how did you know? Spirits of children are extremely versatile, miss. They are smaller and less noticeable than a regular spirit, but their emotions run just as high, if not higher, making them more powerful. So a child made you fight Eric? <laughs> Can you just- Oh my goodness, if- if Iridessa delivered that line just way more sassier just because I'm playing as Diva, it would or Breva, my bad. Um, then it would have been just like Spirit so, so a child made, made you fight, fight Eric? Eric? <laughs> yes. It also called Eric the Icky Man. <laughs> the Icky Man. Well, you were for a long time, dude. You can't deny that. <laughs> Matthew, you piece of <laughs> That was before I met my princess. Oh my goodness. He's an icky man. You changed me for the better and turned me into a proper man. I would never wish for you to feel that I am disgusting. Gotta smooch him. I'm so glad that I changed Norin's line from being like, Matthew, don't say stuff like that, to actually being like totally in line with what he wants. It's just, ah, uh, he's, before it was something like, Matthew, that's so inappropriate, or don't be inappropriate, and then I changed it, and it was like, please! <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Da, 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 da. Should we leave? They look like they're ready to make those babies now. Ow! Knock it off, Matthew. Oh my goodness. Can we Should just- we leave? They look like they're ready to make those babies now. Ow! Knock it off, Matthew. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they look like they're about to bake those babies. <laughs> Diana, dear. May I come in? Sure, come on in. Did you not enjoy breakfast? I can make you something else if you'd like. I see. Thank you for breakfast, by the way. My pleasure. I'm sorry that it's not much, but it's something to fill the stomach. It's all good. It's better than that stew that everyone else was eating. We had stew? Trust me, don't worry about it. You're not missing much. We it's all good. We had stew? 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 She didn't have the one word stew. She. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, it was part of my lines where I just went like stew? 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 We had stew? Stew? Like that was me over and over in that, that audio file that I gave her. And she chose that one. Trust me, don't worry about it. You're not missing much. Indeed. Anyways, I came by to ask you something, dear. Huh? Ask me what? What exactly is going on? What was controlling you last night when your husband came around? Hey, Diana didn't know what happened. <sighs> okay. A rogue spirit has taken refuge in her body. A spirit? How? We felt no such- It's a child, Diana. A mere child? What kind of child has that much anger and sadness that they can control the human body? My lady, if I may. Oh, oh, this is some good stuff. Everyone in the room, myself included, looked to Seiro, who had stepped forward by Diana's side. Diana took a moment to watch Seiro, measuring his intentions before nodding and stepping back. With a nod, Seiro turned away from her and looked to Diva. Uh, Sayra stepped once more in Diva's direction before bringing his spear up and pointing it at her. What? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Without answering, Sayra continued to stare at Diva intensely. The spear in his hand began to glow a bright gold and white color, making Diva that much more concerned. In the distance, Diva is sweating bullets. Sanctus et huzexiamentes! Before anyone could jump at Sero, the guard leaned forward merely an inch towards me, pressing the spear closer towards Diva's body. 
Diva is now enveloped by a bright white light. Oh no, and the sound of a child screaming. Princess! Oh boy, oh boy, what a fun time. What in the seven hells? I've never seen magic like that before. I can hear it. The spirit is crying inside her head. Oh. I can hear it. The spirit is crying inside her head. It's hurting her. Damn it. This spirit is extremely powerful, my lady. Powerful enough to block holy magic. That's impossible. <laughs> Looks like your subconscious is stronger than you thought, Diva. Clever spirit. Clever spirit? What do you mean? Look at who the spirit is haunting. She's practically bleeding endless waves of energy. The spirit must be consuming it to survive and use its abilities. Look at Diva. Practically bleeding endless waves of energy. Looks at Diva. <laughs> oh my goodness. The spirit is a demon then? Only a demon could make a barrier like that. But a barrier against holy magic? It's unheard of. Not necessarily. If a demon is powerful enough, they can block holy magic. But it takes a large amount of energy. We have to find another way to expel it. If holy magic won't work, something else will. Spirits can't bind themselves to living bodies forever. Yeah, we'll get this spirit out one way or another. Nathie's voice is so soothing to me. <sighs> what a good time. <sighs> but Whatever the case may be, I'm sure we've at least weakened it. It shouldn't attempt to control you again, at least for today. So, about all of you participating Oh, okay, in the time world. to skip through this. Okay. I... What? What the... Uh, oh, wait. No, I have to do... I don't need a trainer. I was fine on my... Oh, actually, no. Diva is fine on her own. Diana stared at her, slightly miffed and slightly in disbelief. Did she not believe her? She didn't ask... Or, yeah. She didn't ask as Diana pressed her lips into a fine line and looked to the others. Very well. Do what you believe you should. With that, Diana turned on her heel and left the room. Finish eating. Afterwards, you should start training. Everyone in the room nodded with, <laughs> nodded their affirmation as Diana and Sator left. Well, it looks like we'll be busy for the next couple of days. <laughs> this will be fun. This is a beautiful sight. Just like a room full of gorgeous men. It's always a good, always a good. Matthew is a cutie patootie, and I need to Man, just. Training's gonna suck. I need to just move through this because I will keep staring at Matthew like no one's business. Okay. <coughs> so, Diva chose to train on her own. It would not be an easy adventure, but she had practice in self defense from her Taekwondo. If she found a way to add magical energy to the mix, then she would be set. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Okay. It seemed like a good idea until she managed to kick the bench and the bed frame a couple of times, resulting in a very sore foot. This is like playing Mad Libs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it was strange. Practicing her self-defense went normally as she should have done before, but she could tell that she was going to need some help. Diva left her room to wander the halls, curious as to what to do. Should she go to one of the rebels for advice? Should she find Diana? Diva wasn't entirely sure. She felt a bit discouraged, but she pressed forward, letting her feet guide her. <gasps> oh my gosh, is that Merth? That's Merth! <laughs> what a beautiful... Eventually, Diva was led outside where a woman on a strange brown and red horse raced through an obstacle course. They were training dum er, there were training dummies stationed around each turn and the woman rammed her sword into each one as she rode by. I- oh, not I, sorry. Wow. 
Diva was quickly entranced. She looked so natural on the horse and the way she cut through the dummies was downright breathtaking. I grew mildly envious of her skill. As she spotted me, however, or she, as she spotted Diva, however, she stopped and pulled the reins on her horse. Whoa! Huh. You must be the human. <laughs> you look much prettier than I imagined. Yeah. Bree is really pretty. The woman quickly jumped down from her horse and walked over to Bree, smiling a kind smile her way as she approached. Oh, um, hi. I didn't mean to disturb you from your training or anything. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I will figure out a voice to to give Diva, but you know what? Diva could also voice herself, and that is okay. Um, let's see. Bree didn't want to stop her or distract her, but the woman waved her hand dismissively with a laugh. It's alright. He needed a break anyway. I'm Mirth, friend. How can I help you? What a beautiful... I stared at her, surprised to see her being so... Oh, wait. Blah, blah, blah. Brienne stared at her, surprised to see her being so cordial to her. Then again, Bree was the guest of the castle and was apparently... Oh, and apparently gossip spread around that a human was staying for the duration of the war. It should not have been a surprise to see such manners. Still, Bree shook her head and smiled. It's nothing, truly. I just wanted to come out and explore. That's all. I am going to challenge myself to give Bree, like, a different voice every time. Explore? How strange. Do humans often wander around on their own? I figured the Rebel Queen would have a bodyguard watch over you. Diva shrugged a bit. It wasn't really a human thing. It was more of a- <laughs> Diva shrugged a bit. It wasn't really a human thing. It was more of a Breva thing. <laughs> she had always naturally been curious and the world she lives in was full of new things to learn. I do, at least. I find it to be a good way to break away from my day-to-day -day routine and take in the sights. Let your mind wander, you know? Mirth stared, nodding a bit, <laughs> despite me seeing a slight distance in her eyes. She was a demon after all, Af uh, so the human mind was a little too different when it came to do to what we did and why. Aww. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. It's really nice out here, though. Huh? You're training alone? Why? Well, her sprite doesn't move. I looked over at Mirth. Seeing her tilt her head and lose her head. Oh, poor, poor diva. Not really used to having someone train her. But maybe she didn't want to worry about someone watching her train. But you didn't want to bring any of the rebel leaders down. Actually, is this supposed to be... This isn't supposed to be said, is it? Wait, they all offer oh, to train Oh, it is you? meant to be said. Yep. Yep, she nodded. Yeah, they are all open to da 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 Ah, yeah. Good stuff. Understandable, friend. Still, the rebel leaders are amazing fighters. They would have taught you a lot. Wow. Wow. <gasps> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, this is a beautiful. Oh, can we talk about this demon with the, the mouth on his neck or its neck? That's really neat. Oh my goodness. What a good. <laughs> Those are the best of the best here in the rebellion. Yeah. All of those fighters rose up in the ranks and are now lower generals and captains, brought up to lead and train the rest of the army with the same tough love the commander gives them. <gasps> nice. I'm technically a lower general like them, but I lead the front lines while they lead the troops that back us up. We have different strategies. My section is meant to be a wall of tanks and cavalry, pushing the enemy back and cutting down as many of their number as possible. Their sections are for when the enemy gets through my wall. The strongest of the generals. 
No, no. We're all pretty equally strong. I've just been in the army long enough to know how to train on my own. It's not a big deal, really. Wow. Look at them. All of those soldiers are fighting for the same cause. To stop the Demon Lord and bring peace to this world. That's why we're here. Yeah, that's why we're here. Train with Murph, yes. It would be my pleasure, friend. Oh, I love that she says friend a lot because that reminds me of some of the people at the college at Cornish College, which is just down the hill that Sakuru goes to. She actually Sakuru does this a lot, but also all of her friends, and they we also call, say that to each other. It's just like punctuate with friend, and it's very soothing. Go ahead and pick up a weapon. Something here should suit you. There's a barrel over there that has plenty of swords you can use and take for your own. It's light steel perfected right here at Lilith Castle. As weightless as a toy, but just as deadly as a common blade. Give it a couple of swings. Oh, actually it's interesting that our sprite doesn't change. See? Wow. What did I tell you? Wow. Good job, human! Are you well trained in blade work? Oh. Okay. Focus on your target and decide how you want to- I've read through this a lot since- since of the- because of the- of editing, so- See? I'm just gonna- Oh, wait. Saving. Saving. Uh, there we go. Let's see. I fell onto- Okay, so I'm just gonna read it with- I fell onto my bed, exhausted. My body felt completely at the mercy of the fluffy mattress beneath me. Today was rough. Luckily, before I came back to the room, I'd been shown bathrooms where I could relieve myself and bathe properly. At least hygiene wouldn't be an issue. I had bathed in crystal clear water before returning to my room and flopping into the bed like a bum. I heard the door open and close, followed by a soft pattern of labored footsteps. Oh, wait, nope, it's Eric fun time. Okay. I thought it was going to be the wife scenes. Oh, well. Larry, we're going to have... Some intimacy with Eric, and by we, I mean Diva. Shirtless and the skin was- Oh, actually, I have to read this out loud for Diva, don't I? Eric was shirtless and his skin was beautifully covered in water droplets. His hair was damp and his breathing was labored. He must have trained hard, if not harder than me at least, and bathed right after. Ugh, oh, that's so gorgeous. Imagine him flushed with his skin soft red around his shoulders and back where the shower would hit him with hot water. Actually, it wouldn't be a shower. It'd be like his lower half then if it was just like, yeah. Yeah, look at that Adonis belt that he has going on. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> good evening, love. That's exactly how Diva would handle this. I could tell that he wanted to flop onto the bed and simply pass out, but something held him back. I tilted my head at him, making Eric smile. I'm going over what happened today. I'm trying to put on my best sexy voice for D.Va so that Eric gets seduced on behalf of her, but it's not working. Do you feel disgusted by me? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, come here often? Eric goes like, I've been thinking a lot about today. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Stay where you are, cuddle with him, sit next to him. You are gonna cuddle with him. 
<laughs> I settled close to him and placed my head on his shoulder. Eric smiled and wrapped an arm around me, holding me close. It's been a long while since I've trained like that. Since Malik's, right? I am sorry that I'm unintentionally doing this, like, this, this seductive tone all the time, but it's just, <laughs> I'm just, like, so ready to get Diva to bang this guy, oh my god. Eric nodded with a smile at her. I, let's see, Diva remembered Malix, that damnable monster. He wanted to kill the boys and even kidnap Diva at his bait. Luckily, he didn't last long. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, okay. Diva yawned and got ready for bed. There was no use in prolonging sleep. The darkness welcomed her into its embrace and Eric wrapped his arms around her protectively. <laughs> oh, it's the spirit. Go away! Oh. No, you're not. Why did you do that? Why did you hurt me? Oh... You just like him! No. The evil man. The evil man that killed me. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna hurt me again! Hmm. Are you all right? The icky man is back. <laughs> don't listen to whatever that spirit says. We'll expel it soon enough. You don't care about her. You just care about babies. <laughs> oh, look at him. I saw Diva stared as instinctively Eric summoned his tendrils, ready to attack, but his expression melted into concern. Something was holding him back, and it made me a bit worried. Was the spirit telling the truth? The spirit simply faded into the dark without continuing the conflict, leaving us alone. Leaving them alone. Eric? Yes, my princess? Do you want me to be pregnant? Where is this coming from? I would be happy to have you bear my children and for you to be a wonderful mother, but not unless you want to. You would be the one bearing the burden the longest. Aww, he cares so much about you. In the demon world, it is a regular occurrence for Incubi and Succubi to breed as often as possible. It's only natural that I'd want children, Princess. However, you are a human, and even more so, you are the one I love. I obey your every command. Looks. Wow. He obeys your every command. He is a keeper. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's a keeper. He'll obey your every command. Before her eyes, Eric slowly wrapped his arms around Diva's form and kissed her forehead. The warmth of his embrace made her entire body melt, but she wrapped her arms around him in return. We're not even married yet. We can probably wait until after we say our vows before we think about children. <gasps> so considerate! <laughs> nice, 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 nice. He left to go train with his brother, sweetie. Oh. Here, something warm today. Thank you. Do you know the child that's in your body? Well, we'll be able to expel it soon enough. I have Shadow in charge of figuring out how to sever the ties that spirit has on your body and forcing it free. You now care a lot about the spirit. You're concerned for the spirit's safety over your own. That spirit is clinging to you and using its emotions to make you feel sorry for it. It wants you to love it, so you will let it stay in your body. Does the spirit ever enter your dreams? 
You know, there is a way we can stop the spirit from communicating with you until we can expel it. The spirit is a child, and is most likely repulsed by romance and sex, am I correct? I don't... I, I can see where this is going. The spirit is feeding on and using your energy. The only way to stop it is to drain yourself of energy. Essentially, after training, give your remaining energy to your fiancé. Kiss, hug, fuck, it doesn't matter. As long as your energy is completely drained, you'll sleep, and because you'll have no energy, the spirit won't be able to appear in your dreams. You'll have an empty sleep. Okay. It's up to you. We should have the means to expel the spirit in a day or two. I mean, you're gonna fuck Eric anyway, right? You may not believe it, but I do actually enjoy aiding people. When I can, at least. What a good, good queen. Too bad I'm not trying as hard to keep her on my side. Or keep her alive. Whew, that was a lot of... That was a lot of hard decisions, but yes, I got her to live. But yeah, I'm, not, I'm gonna try focusing mostly on Eric choices for this anyway. And oh, also peeking at all of the other wives. Dear, what are you? How pitiful. However you got into this body, we will free you, child. Are you yourself again? Oh wait. No, I don't want Diana to take the the energy. Oh well. I don't know if I no, no, no well. For now, to... rest a bit. You'll be able to regain some energy and be able I to train to be as on if the side happened. of the spirit. As oh. long as you're not brimming with it, the spirit shouldn't be able to take control of you again. Oh well. That's what I get for reading too fast. She's very special. That's why. Okay. I trained once more from the morning to the night, desperate to become better at the sword. Mirth managed to time to step in and occasionally to give pointers, but she became an observer as I practiced on my own, seeing me improve. Training was rough, but my body knew it had to be ready for the journey in the battle ahead. Staring into the skies, I became enamored by darkening purple tint. Da, da, da. What the? I slowly inched my way forward and moved the brush aside, watching as two figures darted off into the forest. Determined and curious to find out who they were, I began to pursue them. Oh boy. Ugh, this is gonna be good. Sneaking through the trees was no easy task, but I managed to keep my distance and keep the shadowy figures in my sights before seeing them stop by a collection of trees, one leaning up against one of the tree trunks and the other curled over their legs, gasping for air. Hey! Slow down, you big dork! Huh? I knew that voice. I focused between the brush of trees and bushes to concentrate on the figures, finally able to figure out who they were. Look at them! Look at Sam and Carrie! Look at Sam and Carrie! Look at Sam and Carrie! Look at these two! <sighs> what a cute scene! They're in the woods. Ah, oh, it brings you back to their their lives as Red Riding Hood and the Hunter's Son. Back in the woods. What a good! What a good! Leaning by that set of trees were Sam and Carrie, with him smirking at his wife, who was panting for air. Oh, what's wrong? Too fast for you? Noticing the obvious innuendo, Carrie pressed her lips together, unable to stop the giggles from making her body shake from holding them in. <laughs> mm-hmm, too fast. Seems to be a problem of yours. Oh, come on. Do you want me to carry you all the time? It's not even hard. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> Ugh, that's not... I did it! 
<laughs> this is so cute. The delivery of those lines was so adorable. <laughs> I couldn't help but silently laugh at the two of them. Sam and Carrie were perfect for each other. They were both feisty, and <laughs> they were both spicy. And despite having their differences, they were madly in love, showing it with every laugh and kiss they shared. Oh my goodness, what a cute, cute pair! Ah! I was extremely happy that Sam and Carrie had hit it off so well, remembering how hilariously they had met and how their journey to eventual marriage came full of excitement and energy. Despite her jabs at her husband, Carrie naturally gave off an older sister kind of aura, and she was always doing something to take care of the Incubus brothers, their wives, and me. She was she truly made us feel like family, and Sam loved to brag that he had the best woman ever at his side. Still, I was particularly happy for Sam. He seemed he really seemed to have it rough in the human world for a while, and had even talked about returning to the demon world after his four brothers settled down. When Carrie came into his life, though, he seemed to change his mind. Okay, okay, I'll stop. That's what you get for making me run. Come on, you know you love me, you doofus. Yeah, I do, but I'll fight you anyway. Now come here. Oh, they're so cute! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, what a cute pair! Ah, and now, the, 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 the love music. Carrie walked over and leaned her body against Sam's chest, making him naturally wrap his arms around her and nuzzle her forehead. They smiled happily at each other as Carrie wrapped her arms around his neck. So, what's this about, anyway? Did you just want your slow-ass human wife to chase you for shits and giggles? Sam took a moment, his fi- <sighs> His smile slowly fading before squeezing Carrie's body tightly and looking down at the ground beside him. Well, I... I wanted to, uh... I became worried. What was wrong with Sam? He lapsed into silence as he stared at the ground, frow furrowed as he struggled to find what he wanted to say. Carrie's head tilted to the side as she looked up at him, her earlier mirthful humor gone from her expression. Hey... I watched one of her hands rose to the back of his head, softly stroking his hair. It's just me, Sam. You can tell me. That's such a very sweet... It's just me, Sam. You can tell me. Aw, oh, that's such a sweet... With a sigh, Sam finally returned his gaze to Carrie, eyes almost pleading. Carrie, marry me. Trivia, flashbacks is playing in the background, so this just got- Oh, this hurts me so... Oh, it's... Carrie, marry me. She stared at him in confusion, lips parting to say something before she froze. Her expression slowly morphed into shock as she realized what he meant. I remained confused, not sure at all what he was talking about. They were already married, right? Sam, are you serious? Sam nodded, his nervousness obvious from his worried expression. He took one of Carrie's hands from around his neck and kissed over her wedding ring before closing his eyes and inhaling deeply. I always thought I'd come back to the abyssal plains, you know? I never felt like I belonged in the human world like my brothers. So I figured I'd eventually come back and maybe kick my old man's ass while I was at it. Sam looked down at Carrie and cupped her cheek, the white streak in her hair catching the fading evening light flashing silver as she brushed or as he brushed it behind her ear. I could see a faint blush spread across her cheeks as she stared up at him, listening intently. After I met you, I stopped caring about the demon world, or coming back someday. All I care about is you, and I don't think I could even be happy here anymore if you're not by my side. So I want to take one last thing away from this world before I leave it behind. I want to marry you like the demon I am before I say fucking and ditch this plane for good. Huh? Up for it? Oh. 
Almost as if on cue, the wind softly began to pick up, and the leaves rustled around them, flower petals dancing along the sudden breeze. Carrie's eyes began to water as she nuzzled Sam's hand with a smile. You twerk, making me worry. Of course I'll bind my soul to you, Sam. I stared wide-eyed. Bind her soul to him? Was that how demon marriages work? It seemed so as Sam grinned from ear to ear, tears filling his own eyes as he embraced Carrie tightly to him and buried his head in her shoulder. Carrie laughed, finally crying as she hugged him. Oh my god, these two sedate works. <laughs> Binding our souls. Does that mean that next time we're reborn, we can have a better first date than Denny's? Are you seeing this? This is so... Oh my goodness! Oh, they're adorable! Oh my goodness. <sighs> <laughs> Don't look at me, doofus. That was all your idea anyway. Oh my god, these two. I know, I'm just making a mental note here. <sighs> How are we gonna find everything for the ritual? God, where are we even gonna do it? Uh, Sam laughed and pulled away, kissing Carrie's forehead before staring down at her. Don't worry, I got it. Diana said she had a private garden or something where we can do the ritual. She's gonna get us what we need too, so we don't have to worry about it. Carrie smiled and lightly poked Sam's forehead. I seem to recall you having nothing but nasty things to say about that crazy bitch before. Is she finally growing on you? Oh, for fuck's sake, just shut up and come here already! Ah, 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 they're so cute! Sam grinned before leaning in and kissing Carrie hard, wrapping a hand behind her head to pull her in towards his lips. Carrie inhaled sharply before relaxing into the kiss, pressing upward onto her toes to reach. Sam's arm around her waist pulled her against him until her feet lift, left the ground and she, left, uh, she kicked her feet up in joy, ankles crossed as she clung to him. I was insanely happy for them. They looked like a newly engaged couple again, nearly glowing in the incoming light, night. Whatever they were going to do to blind their souls, I hoped it worked for them. I quickly turned and left, not wanting to disturb their time together, and marched back inside the castle towards my room. I didn't look forward to walking back to my room after training. It was easily the hardest part of my day. However, I found it comforting to take my time exploring the castle on my way back. What I didn't expect to was to hear a surprise shout echo through the stone halls. You nerd! <laughs> that is such a great shout to hear echoing through the castle. It's just like mind my own business and it's just all of a sudden. Whoop. You nerd! Yeah, just all of a sudden. <laughs> well, I froze in my tracks, recognizing the voice and deciding to quietly tiptoe towards the door of the room it came from. I peeked in to see the interior of the library and my gaze zeroed in on Iridessa, who was seated in a chair, covering her face with a book. Wow, James leaned over the top of the chair, smirking down at her. Ugh! What? Look at these two! Look at these two! They're so adorable. Ah. <sighs> it was like watching a game of cat and mouse when they teased one another. Iridessa looked up at her husband from behind her book with a giggle, and James watched her like a curious hunter. I'm sorry. Am I intruding on your reading? No. You're being a big nerd, and you know it. Peeking over my shoulder and scaring me like that? How rude. With a small chuckle, James moved from behind the chair and leaned in closer to Iridessa, laying a soft peck on her cheek. She tried to bite back her smile to no avail, instead hiding it behind her book, amusement clear in her eyes. I apologize. I won't do it again. You liar. You definitely will. You're so adorable. Oh my god. Iridessa dropped the book to her lap with a pout before shooting James a mock glare as he continued to simply smile at her as if he had done absolutely nothing wrong. She couldn't keep the expression up, however, letting out an amused huff of breath as a grin tugged at her lips. I'll make it up to you. I'll serve you a plate of crepes in the morning. 
proudly the way you delivered that line. I'll serve you a plate of crepes in the morning. I'll make it up to you. I'll serve you a plate of crepes in the morning. Oh my goodness, that's so enticing. Will you feed it to me as well? If that is what you wish. Well, I don't need it, but I won't say no. Oh my goodness, Iridessa is such a good... Oh my goodness. The game of cat and mouse that they have going on. This is so cute. Their dynamic is really adorable. How? How? Oh my goodness. The dynamic between them always stands between a mature king and queen-like couple to Iridessa being insanely hard to get and James giving a playful bait-and-switch chase. It was amusing to catch glimpses of their intimacy. Even when we had first met, the relationship between Iridessa and James always seemed to fluctuate on who was truly in charge. Iridessa let out a sigh, sitting up straight in her chair as James walked over to the fireplace and stared into the flames. Her countenance wavered as she watched him, features shifting into something more hesitant, almost nervous, a stark contrast to her earlier mirth. Hey, James? Yes, Iri? Can I ask you something? James looked over to her in curiosity, nodding to the question. Eridessa took in a deep breath and closed the book in her hands, laying it on her lap. We're gonna go home soon, right? Of course. As soon as we resolve this war, we'll return home. Something was wrong. I could feel it just by looking at Eridessa, and I knew James did as well. She had something on her mind. Would she say it aloud? Is something troubling you, love? She closed her eyes and took a moment to seemingly gather her nerves before looking to James once more. It's just... Is it wrong that I... I... kind of don't want us to be here? What? Where did this come from? James seemed to be confused by the question too, raising an eyebrow at her. Huh? What do you mean? Iridessa's teeth dug into her lower lip before she placed the book on the table beside her and stood up, hugging her arms around herself, her fingers tapping at her arm in an anxious tick. Is it bad that I... I don't want us to be in the same place as Diana? Oh my god! Oh, I read this so many times, but it's so good with the voice acting and the sprites and look at these two! Oh my god! I stared wide-eyed at Iridessa. She really didn't want to be here? What was this about? She seemed supported thus far, but what about Diana made her feel uneasy? James turned fully around to Iridessa with a look of mild surprise before his expression lit up with realization. Is it because she was once my betrothed? Iridessa seemed to wince at the sentence, but nodded nonetheless in response to James's question. I understood why, though. Who would want to be in the same place as the woman who could have taken the one you loved away? James' lips drooped into a frown as he crossed his arms. I'm sure she has no intentions of taking me away from you. That's not what I meant. I just... Eridessa looked down at the ground, pressing her lips together in a fine line. I guess I'm just not comfortable being here with her. Something about her just... I don't know. I mean, she's a gorgeous succubus and all, and I'm just nothing compared to her. Love. How could I even compete? You two could have ruled together, made a beautiful couple. She could have given you more than I ever could. She is. You're Odessa. Can we just talk about these two? This is a really lovely love story. They're a couple. Everything, like, is so gorgeous and beautiful and, like, <sighs> oh my goodness. What a, what a cute pair. Airy. <laughs> James's tone forced Iridessa to look up at his face, seeing the stern king she, his queen, had married. There is no competition. Right, wait. You Seeing the stern king, he, wait, she, his queen, had married. Okay, the pronouns are correct. Whew. There is no competition. You are the woman I chose, the one I wanted, the beautiful and kind woman whom I was lucky enough to marry. I swore to be with you for the rest of my life as your husband. 
No one in the five worlds can make me betray you or lose the love I feel for you. Oh my goodness! This confession is really fucking amazing! Oh my god! Oh my goodness, Iridessa! Iridessa! Oh my god, James is so totally whipped for you! Oh my god, he really, really loves you! Oh my goodness! <sighs> you should lord it over him, tease him about it. Oh my goodness, you totally love me. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my goodness, they're so gorgeous. Although James's hair is not shaded at all, I think. That's okay. But oh my goodness. Oh, look at these children. Look at them hugging. Look at that height difference. Oh my goodness. He could totally just chin her. Oh my god. Resting his chin on her head. <laughs> James slowly walked over to Iridessa, wrapping his arms around his wa wife's waist. She squeezed her arms around him tightly for a moment before letting out a sigh, the tension leaking from her shoulders as she looked up at him. You're right. I'm sorry, James. I'm not doubting you, I swear. I just... I guess I've been overthinking a bit lately. Sometimes it's still hard to believe that you chose me when you could have anyone in the world you desired. You were the only one I desired. I am yours and you are mine forevermore. I vow to give you my entire life and will protect you for as long as I live by your side. Lux at midnight? That is a really, really good line. Oh my goodness. That's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, these two. Maestro. At the mere mention of his demon name, I could see energy pulse around James's form, and he let out a small pleasured hum as he leaned in and pressed his forehead against Iridessa's. You know that you're not supposed to use my real name unless you need something. I could feel a wave of voyeuristic embarrassment run along my cheeks as Iridessa looked away from him, biting her lip coyly. James chuckled deeply, however, and kissed her temple, hugging her close to him. We'll be home soon, I promise. Once this war is over, we'll return and never have to worry about Diana ever again. Okay? Okay. I love you. I love you too. Always. Oh my goodness, they still are so cute. Oh my god. Iridessa finally looked up at James and smiled sweetly. He mirrored her grin, leaning down but stopping halfway so his love would strain on the edge of her toes to claim her kiss. Her smile shifted into one of mischief as her fingers curled into the soft material of his sweater just over his chest. She tugged, bringing him down so their lips could finally meet. I couldn't help but admire them. They made a picturesque pair, complementing each other in many ways, be it with fashion, personality, or even with their endearing height difference. Seeing them together, sharing such a sweet moment, reminded me of when I first met her. Iridessa exuded an air of delicate shyness that balanced well with James's commanding presence. I recalled how quiet but polite she had been during our first meeting, full of kind smiles and soft laughter. However, watching Iridessa close the gap between her and the eldest of the brothers made her appear more powerful. She had claimed a would-be king and didn't dare dream of letting him go. I became a little envious of her, but I was happy with the man I had in my life. Their hands started to wander and I could feel my cheeks heat up. I realized that I had peeked in on them long enough. Wanting to give them some privacy, I turned and left them alone to continue my journey to my room. Looks at James Knight? Getting frisky there, aren't we? Oh, Welp. Okay, now we're doing some Eric-related stuff. But, uh, the, the happy music is still here. Flashbacks. Whew. Another long day. How was your day, love?
Hmm? What? Uh, this is hard, actually, because there's a bajillion choices for this. <sighs> da -da. Man, I have to move really fast through so then I can get to the other wife scenes and then take a break. I've been streaming for a very long time. <laughs> uh, sorry to say that I will be doing a very nice let's play of Eric's route. I am go men. What would Diva do? Okay, so if Diva's was really exhausted, she would still curl up to him like really, really close and smooch him. But that's it. But pull him to you. Actually, yeah, that was what Diva would do. Princess. What the? Wait, I wasn't expecting this at all. Huh? What's wrong? Get away from me! What the? Love, what's wrong? Calm down or don't take any chances. I feel like Diva would actually not take any chances. Like, <laughs> she wouldn't calm down in this situation. <laughs> But oh my goodness, I know what the right answer would have been, but oh my goodness, Eric though is like... Oh my goodness, poor Eric. <laughs> Diva would not take any chances. Princess! Oh, there we go. It's okay. Oh. The spirit must be playing tricks on you again. We'll remove it soon enough. I promise. <laughs> all right, all right. Now we're now we're in the next part. Whew, okay. Uh, I'm actually really nervous for the Norin and Matthew scene because oh my god. <sighs> Mm. Okay. I slowly became more comfortable with the sword and began to do more tricks. I became more agile, more aware of my surroundings. As I continued to slice through the dummy, I decided to call Mal. I don't know why, but the names felt right for it. I pulled myself from the training grounds to the gates and through the castle doors. The interior was dark, yet the warm, ever-burning fires that served as lights illuminated the corridors. It used my ability to navigate through the, the winding halls. Double the... The walk was peaceful and quiet on the way to my destination, until I heard a familiar laughter tear through the walkway. <sighs> Simon! Get back here, Simon! I barely had the chance to turn around and see a small white critter run past me, followed by a pair of fluffy, dark-haired heads in a mad chase. Whoa! Like a whirlwind, uh, like a whirlwind, I practically spun around in place as Matthew and Norin rushed past me, trying not to collide into me while maintaining pursuit of their furry friends, Simon Tabby. Sorry. Sorry. No. Oh my God, these nerds. Sorry! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Before I managed to shake off the dizzy spell I was under, Norn and Matthew had vanished into a nearby room where I had assumed they chased their furry quarry. Holding my head to steady myself, I jumped at the multitude of clangs and thuds emanating from the room before the sound ceased altogether. I tiptoed towards the door and peeked in, chasing my curiosity. These skirts. These nerds are so funny. <sighs> Look at how serious these two are. 
Inside, Matthew and Norrin surrounded the fluffball Simon in the, on the war room table, <laughs> gripping onto each side of the table and glaring hard at their target. They looked as if they were generals with how they stared down at the critter that pawed at, the, at nations beneath its feet. Norrin broke the silence, wearing her best coaxing smile. Come on, Simon. Let's go back to the room, yeah? Matthew, not as patient as, what, as his wife, jumped onto the table and clasped both hands around Simon, grinning as Simon made a surprised squeak. Gotcha! A triumphant grin stretched across Matthew's face as he started to relish in his success. Norrin smirked, but dropped her expression as she quickly turned wide-eyed and frantic. Wait, he still has the- Go! Oh, oh! The glint of tiny steel told me more than enough. Matthew momentarily forgot that Simon wielded a knife. It was blunt, meant to be a toy imitation, yes, but in the paws of Simon, it was more than enough to hurt. Matthew released his grip from Simon, clutching his- Oh, oh my god, these nerds are so dreamy. Matthew released his grip from Simon, clutching his hand and hissing in pain as Norrin swiftly replaced his former hold on the doll. She lunged across the table, wrapping her hands around the toy's torso and trapping Simon's little arms between her fingers, rendering his weapon useless. <laughs> Didn't think of that, did you, Simon? Simon deflated with a squeal of defeat before becoming still in Norrin's hands, turning into a doll once more. With a sigh, Norrin and Matthew finally eased and collapsed on the table, shutting their eyes from exhaustion. Finally, we can relax. Yeah, jeez, that took forever. Look at them, oh my goodness. It looks like they're holding hands. This is so, so stupid. <laughs> uh, also still can't get over how my voice sounds. Norrin rolled onto her back on the table Stare and stared at the ceiling, bringing Simon to her chest and letting out another tired sigh. Matthew chuckled lightly before lying beside her, doing the same. It was rare to see either of these two without their usual buzz of excitement. Norrin lazily laid her arm across Matthew's face in an attempt to run her hand through his hair, to which Matthew returned the gesture with an exaggerated plop of his hand on her face to caress her cheek. Plop. God. <laughs> Laughter spilled out from them, their contagious chuckles and making it hard for me to stifle the bubbly giggles rising in my throat. I held back my laugh, biting my lip with a wide smile. Even when they looked exhausted, I couldn't help but feel light and giggy, gid, gid, giddy from watching them. Norrin always seemed to be bursting with energy whenever she fluttered around the other wives and I, eager to embark on adventures wherever, whether it was across the world or to a nearby diner at 3 in the morning. Yet, I knew there were moments where her waves of energy ebbed, just like now. Despite those times, she was a master of quick clips and one-liners that it seemed only Matthew could keep up with her with his own wit and creative power. They were perfect friends, so aligned and in sync, that it was easy to see them as husband and wife. <laughs> Norrin's eyes lit up as a flash of inspiration dawned on her. She smirked and turned to Matthew with a curt bow. So... When is Simon going to have a suitor? Huh? Matthew looked over at her with mixed shock and fear. While Norrin held back a laugh in her cheeks at his expression, Matthew shook his head violently. No way. There's no way I'm going to give him another reason to run around and go crazy. And give us another doll like that to deal with. Oh my goodness. Do you see these... Ch <sighs> Six in my chair. <sighs> Two, wrestling and being such dweebos. What? Oh, come on! Imagine the fun of designing his new friend. All the little details, from the color of its eyes to the fluff of its fur. Plus, think of all the adventures they'd have together. So much fun that it might even distract Simon from messing with us. Well, I mean, I guess you're right, but... Matthew brought a- oh my god. Uh, hearing those t Hearing my voice and his voice together. Oh my fuck. <sighs> Matthew brought a hand to his chin as so he looked deep in- th 
<laughs> oh my god, can I even read anymore? Matthew brought a hand to his chin so he looked deep in thought over the suggestion. She looked on expectantly, waiting for his final answer before her eyes caught his hand shifting over his mouth to hide his growing smirk. Norn gave a toothy grin to Matthew before gently pinching and pulling his cheek. Come on, one more go at a living toy. And look, you're smiling too, you totally wanna. Matthew stuck out his tongue and threatened to lick Norn's hand to gross her out and release her grip on his cheek. She flinched, but remained resolute, nearly laughing at his attempt and teasing his face further. I bit my lip to stop myself from laughing, but watching the two struggle for the upper hand made it hard not to imagine if they were like this all the time. It even became apparent to me that Nora actually dominated the relationship with Matthew, following her, and not surprisingly, Matthew seemed to enjoy that, peppering in his own competitive bursts and challenges to her lead. <laughs> You think a little spit will scare me? <sighs> all right, all right, I'll do it, okay? Satisfied, Norn finally released her hold on his cheek. She smiled at her husband before plopping down with her back flat against the table, breathing out a contented sigh. I love you. You know that, right? Matthew took a moment to- Oh my goodness, it still feels so weird hearing my own voice. Yeah. Matthew took a moment to rub his cheek before looking down at her with a grin of his own, leaning down and kissing her nose and making her sputter and widen her eyes. Of course I do. You know I love you, right, Norin? <sighs> oh boy. Okay. Whew. Okay. Oh, that was a bullet to, to, to me. A mere second passed between them before Norin wrapped her arms around Matthew's neck and pulled him down, locking her lips to his and making him flail from losing his balance. Luckily, he planted his hands on the table beside her head so he didn't crush her. Matthew relaxed in the kiss and closed his eyes, melting into it before Norin's arms relaxed and let him pull away slightly to look into her eyes. They stared at each other with goofy smiles as each of them began to blush a cute pink color. I know you do, Matthew. I couldn't live without your warm hugs. Or your dorky face. You're the best. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're the best. I don't know how you did it. Waiting for me and looking for me for so long. The first six times were hard, yeah, but i definitely spend another nine searching for you. <laughs> My heart ached as well, nostalgic for the sorely missed- Ugh, blah, blah, blah. My heart ached as well, nostalgic for the sorely missed normal that we had in the human world, but smiled at the sight of them curled up in one another's jackets. I only heard bits and pieces from them, but from what I've pieced together, I could tell that their first meeting wasn't as Matthew and Norrin. They've waited so long to meet one another. Now that they're together, I hardly saw them more than an arm's length apart. Both of them were adorable together, and I could tell that life was going to be full of adventures for them regardless of who truly was in the lead and where their energy took them. They relished in the sweetness before Norrin's eyes became half-lidded and her smile turned wicked. So, uh, there's no one around and I don't feel like heading back just yet. Right here? But Simon's here. He could be watching. Like he hasn't intentionally walked in on us before and threw glitter all over your back. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. But can we, like, turn him around or put him in a drawer? Are you getting shy on me? Norrin smiled, ready to one-up her love, but Matthew's eyes darkened as competitive- Oh my god, what is going on anymore? <sighs> Competitive fire burned inside him. His mouth twitched into a sly smirk. Oh, don't think I'm gonna be the shy one tonight. I never back down from a challenge. What the fuck? <sighs> Goodbye. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, everything. I'm not here anymore. I'm dead. I think I just knocked over something. Oh my god. <sighs> Okay, okay, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I 
And I wrote that too. God fucking damn. <sighs> I gasp. <laughs> feeling my er fire feeling my ears burn from secondhand embarrassment and fighting my urge to walk in and prevent them from ruining the war room any more than they have with their shenanigans. Norn perked up at my surprised sound, glancing over the door where I stood and shot me a mischievous smile with a finger to her lips. I finally turned and left, needing to continue my own journey to my room and clear any intention of returning to that room again. Wow, that happened. Oh my god. Norn and Matthew were pieces of shit. Oh my god. They're both in pieces of shits. <sighs> okay, well. It wasn't as emotionally touching as like the the like the marriage, the second marriage proposal and like the love like thing going on with Eerie and James, but like it was so fluffy and cute. It's just like so comedic. It was so cute. Oh my god. Ugh, oh, that was perfect though. It doesn't need to be heavy. Ah, <sighs> what a good. Thoughts of my training came to mind on my way back to my room. Would I be ready? Would everything work out in the end? What about the issues I was having on top of the war? I couldn't stop myself from thinking all of these thoughts when, before hearing the soft pattering of footsteps walking to an interesting rhythm like a waltz. Huh? I instinctively followed the noise to the door leading into the grand hall. The door was barely open a crack, but still managed to echo the sound of waltzing from it, leading to gaze upon who was forming the sound. As my eyes locked onto Damien and Twyla, my mind went blank. I knew how to avoid Damien's mind reading, and it had become a natural instinct for me whenever I saw him. Look at how these two complement each other. Oh my god, these color palettes are so nice. Ah, I'm not kidding. These color palettes are really, really nice. I'm crying. These two are so Still, I watched as Damien and Twyla danced around the room in a sweet, slow waltz with Twyla <laughs> with Twyla blushing a deep crimson and Damien smiling comfortingly to his wife. It was adorable to watch. Twyla and Damien's wedding or er, er, marriage was still new and the wedding or er, the wedding having been a few months ago. Twyla was still getting used to the idea of being a part of the family. But every day seemed to open her up a bit more to Damien's brothers and to me. I had hoped one day to get close enough to see her more energetic side, which Damien and the other wives claimed she had, but it would still take time. Still, I need my mind. You know what I'm going to say. I do, but I'd rather hear you say it. Why? Because it will make you feel better. I know it. A single moment passed before Twyla let out a small sigh and nodded. As she did, Damien led them back into a slow waltz, simple enough for Twyla to follow along and keep talking. Part of me just... I don't know. It feels like it belongs here in this world. Like I belong here. Damien, I've never felt so alive before. But I know that the human world is my home. Damien nodded and spun her around slightly. As she did, Twyla took in a breath, physically with Holy moly, like, look at these two. <sighs> oh, they're so sweet. Slowly, Damien lifted Twyla back up, locking eyes with her and releasing her hand to cup her cheek. You've been nervous this whole time we've been here. What's wrong? Twyla bit her lip and nuzzled Damien's hand closing her eyes. I furrowed my eyebrows. What was going on with Twyla? I can't help it, Damien. I mean, we're in the demon world, for Christ's sake. Mm-hmm. I could tell Damien wasn't going to let it go. Twyla looked up at him at last and cupped his hand in hers, leaning further into his palm. You can read my mind. You know what I'm going to say. I do, 
But I'd rather hear you say it. Why? Because it will make you feel better. I know it. A single moment passed before Twyla let out a small sigh and nodded. As she did, Damien led them back into a slow waltz, simple enough for Twyla to follow along and keep talking. Part of me just... I don't know. It feels like it belongs here in this world. Like I belong here. Damien, I've never felt so alive before. But I know that the human world is my home. Damien nodded and spun her around slightly. As she did, Twyla took in a breath, physically relaxing a bit more and becoming lost in the dance Damien was leading her through. But this place also brought you so many bad memories, so I feel terrible for feeling at home here. I don't know, Damien. I know that it's because I'm only half human, but... I stared wide-eyed at Twyla. She was half demon? What kind of demon was she? Questions gathered in my chest, remembering that Damien was still able to hear thoughts. Damien, however, only smiled and pulled Twyla closer to him, making her gasp. Twyla, it's alright. I promise I'm okay. But Damien, you want to be human. And what does that have to do with anything? Oh my god, these two. Damien. Oh my god, they're so cute. Finally, Twyla stopped dancing and stood still, looking up to her husband with serious eyes. Damien stared back, listening intently. You married me even though I'm technically Fay. You love me even though I'm proud of who I am. I don't want to alienate you because I find this world to be as beautiful as my mother said it would be. Silence passed once again between them. I felt sorry for Twyla. She seemed serious about the whole ordeal, but Damien's simple smile practically melted the tension from the air. This world is your home too. As much as I hated being here, this world was the place I was born in. Damien brought Twyla's hand to his lips, pressing his love on her wrist and moving it to gently place a kiss on her forehead, making the blush on her face intensify at the intimate gestures. He chuckled at how he elicited such a response from his wife before nuzzling her nose to nose. But, if I'm with you, then I can make brand new memories wherever we are, even here in the demon world. The past is the past. My future is with you. Oh. My heart instantly melted at the words. It was so sweet to hear Damien say that to Twyla. I could hardly contain myself. Twilight stared up at Damien, flattered and in awe. I couldn't help but smile at the sight. Damien really did love her, and she indeed loved him enough to care about his feelings. I love you, Damien. <laughs> I love you too. What surprised me was Twyla gently leaning up and brushing her lips against Damien's, catching him off guard as well before he pressed back and kissed her lovingly. I nearly squealed at the sight of how cute they were. Damien wrapped his arms around her waist as she tangled her own around his neck, leaning back in the dance embrace. Leaning back in back in the dance embrace they were in and became abs becoming absorbed within each other. I took that moment to quietly sneak away, hoping that Damien wouldn't catch me peeping. Okay, alright, we're done now. Oh my lord. Oh, what a good time to be alive. Okay, okay, we're done here. We're done here. So, that was all of the, the good old scenes, and I am crying. Wait a minute, this isn't right. Uh, gallery, general. Look at all of these. There's one more here, but I'll get to it eventually. But oh my goodness, look at. I have to get Irene's, yes. Oh my goodness. Midnight's just spouting lies. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to load up the file where I could choose my 
my trainer for Irene. Don't need a trainer. Very well. Okay. I just want to be fair and go through Irene's as well, actually. All right. Train well, human, and may. Oh, well, uh. Hi. Please, just trust me, okay? Please. Uh -huh. There's Iridessa. Okay, okay, there you go. <laughs> I'm not just gonna play Matthew's round again. Oh my goodness. I will get a different- I will get a different ending if I do play Matthew's round again. Eventually. I kind of just like a lot of the fluffy scenes and the ending that I got was really good. Because my heart is so like- <sighs> I got Diana to stay alive and Matthew to be- Okay, it's all good. The decor of the halls greeted me as I walked through the corridors, wanting to simply lie down and rest my sore limbs. A muffled giggle, however, caught my attention as I walked past a door that was left open. Out of curiosity, I leaned into the door to find the source of the sound. Inside were Eric and Irene, a pair that emanated charm and sophistication. They were settled at a balcony carved out of the room they were lounging in. From the looks of it, it was, an, it was just an open pocket room, spartan and probably used for private affairs. I, Eric and Irene stood by the railing of the balcony, staring out of, into the sky and smiling at the clear air. I won't lie. I've missed this world a bit. <laughs> that makes only one of us, my love. Oh my goodness, look at these two. It kind of looks like he's holding her hand. Like, like, as if he's holding it out for a princess and she just has it out. Like, <laughs> Oh, come now. You cannot tell me that you don't miss being here. Oh my goodness, her voice is so sexy. Irene turned and leaned back against the railing, giving Eric a smug smile. Irene had always been a mystery to me. I was convinced that she was a succubus, but she wouldn't reveal to me what she really was, which added more mystery to her flair. She was definitely pro-demon, always dropping out of glamour whenever she was alone or with any of her group, but she respected humans enough to work her way to the top of the financial hierarchy the old-fashioned way. When Eric told me about her, I could practically feel the love and devotion he had for her with each, er, with each word he described her with. While I was still his princess, she was his queen in love. Eric chuckled at Irene and shook his head, still facing the sky. This world is too full of boring or terrible memories. I would rather be back in the human world. Nothing to bother us as we enjoy the world together. Irene let out a small laugh before sliding closer to Eric, laying her head on his shoulder and staring at the ground. Eric, there is one thing that bothers me. What is it, my love? Sorry, casually eating mangoes. Mm. Yeah, okay. Irene pressed her lips together. I could see a moment of hesitation and doubt form in her eyes before she let her feelings out into the air. Why are you so close to that girl? Your princess. 
I understand your closeness to your family, but she is your brother's intended. My heart lurched at the mention. Eric looked at her and took a moment before kissing her head sweetly, wrapping an arm across her stomach and hugging her to him. Period. Didn't I tell you before? She saved my life, my brother's lives. I owe her more than any human in the human world. I understand that, but something about the way you speak about her makes it seem like you love her as much as your brother does. I stared at Irene and Eric in shock. He spoke about me? In that way? Why? I was marrying his brother and he was married to her. That made no sense. At Eric's laugh, I broke from my thoughts as did Irene, gasping as he pulled her closer, leaning his forehead to hers. Is my queen becoming jealous of a human girl? What of it? I find it rather adorable and endearing, despite your concern being completely unjustified. Are you truly concerned about me being close to her? And if I said yes? A moment of deep silence passed between them as Eric buried his gaze into Irene's eyes as she did the same to him. Despite the light tension in the air, I knew that Eric didn't see me the way he saw her. He devoted himself to her long before the moment he said I do at their wedding and, despite Eric having some charismatic tendencies, he was never one to betray the trust of someone he cared about. Eric leaned in and captured Irene's lips, making her release a sweetly pleasured sigh against him, lovingly grasped at his shoulders. As he pu slowly pulled away, he gave her a genuine smile. There is no one I love and care for more in this universe than you, my beautiful Maze Man. You completely have my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. And there is no one who can take that away from you. Irene stared into Eric's eyes, reading him and becoming lost with him at, at once. Despite her being the one who controlled the relationship, there were often times where she became the one who followed the one she loved. Irene straightened up in Eric's arms, wrapping her arms around her, his head, and nuzzled her nose and skin's toes. My wonderful, beautiful, radiant maze mare. I will be yours now and in purgatory when we finally rest. If you ever leave my side, I would spend an eternity looking for you. Been there, done that, Eric. It's not a fun time. If you ever went missing, I would scour the entire human world and demon world for you. I am yours as you are mine, Uzairus. The pair smiled lovingly and simply relaxed in each other's embrace. It was rather sweet to see them together. Even as they shared vows in the human world, I could tell their love truly went beyond just their wedding rings. Eric smirked a bit before leaning his head against her, er, beside her face, whispering a very quiet note into her ear. A rough pink blush ran across her cheeks, causing her to smack his shoulder. You absolute tease. I swear you say these things just to make me blush. I won't fall for it. <laughs> I don't tease. I make promises. Oh my goodness. Eric, wow. Another smack on the shoulder made Eric lighten his embrace a bit as he laughed while Irene pressed her lips together in a fake attempt to be angry at him. If I knew anything about Irene, it was that she truly loved Eric from the bottom of her heart. I decided to leave them be and continue heading towards my room. Oh, hello. Sorry. Whoop, 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 uh, whoop, blip, blip. What a whiplash moment. Well, there you go. There's the, there's the thing. All right, so that's all the wife scenes. That's for everyone. I am done with this. So, yeah, that's, that's, that was fun. Uh, I guess next time when I have more time after finals, I'll probably do a run through aiming for Matthew's bad ending because apparently that's a sight to see uh, but yeah all right then i'll probably do that after i finish drawing the, the, the matthew stuff anyway but yeah thank
っぱいいやいやいや